you have a Bible, um, you can turn to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to be looking at uh, three verses, 14, 15, and 16. You can look it up on your phone, too. Um, but that's where we're going to be launching. So if you're, if you're new here, or maybe you're, you're new-ish here, and we were to ask you, what does, what does FBC stand for in, in the name FBC Allen? Uh, and you would, you would say, most, most likely stands for First Baptist Church, and you would be correct. That you've heard, uh, that that is our name, and, and those of you who've been here a little while, you've heard us say this before. First Baptist Church is, is our name, but we don't really feel like it, it completely describes who we are, because uh, the first in our name, first just means we were the, the, the first uh, Baptist Church started in this city. Baptist means uh, in our name that we're, we're affiliated with or partnered with the Southern Baptist Convention. They don't tell us what to do, but rather we partner with them on things to where we choose to partner with it, with them uh, a lot on giving and, and a lot to do with, with mission. So the Baptist, that's where that comes from. And church because, well, we're, we're, a, we're a church. And we're the First Baptist Church of Allen because we're in Allen, exactly. Yeah, we're not in McKinney. We're not in Frisco. So, but so First Baptist Church. But that doesn't really tell you who we are. And so, what we what we try to talk about now, uh, and when we say FBC, here's what we mean. F means uh, it stands for faith. Our goal as a church is to. What was that? Our. Hello, somebody on. Our goal as a church um, is to point people to faith in Christ, in, in, into a growing relationship with Him. B means that, that we feel like everyone should feel like they belong. Every person should belong to a church, and in that church belong to a small group uh, where we are studying and applying God's Word, belong to a ministry um, where we are encouraging one another, ministering to each other, being held accountable, and uh, we're, we're doing that for, for one another. And because God has created us to do life together, this whole series has, has been based on that, doing life together in biblical community. And the C means, means commission, that we're all commissioned uh, by God to, to accomplish His purposes in this world by loving Him, loving others, and sharing that love with, with the world. So that, and that's, by the way, that's not just a calling for certain people, but that's a calling that God has given to all of us. It's all of our job. So that's us. That's us. Faith in Christ belong in community and commissioned for his purpose now that's that's who we are that's who we say we are but our question today is what do what do people see what do people see now have you ever tried to take a, a picture and maybe you've got a family uh, that you're trying to take a, a family photo and maybe you're in a crowded place or whatever or you're trying to get the right shot uh, and, and everything's go, and you snap it, and just as you snap it, someone just kind of walks right in the middle of the photo, and maybe it's uh, on, on purpose, uh, maybe it's just accident, but they end up kind of photo bombing. I have some, I have some examples of this. I just want to show you, run through these. So here we go. We got this sweet shot, and this lady, she's kind of saying sorry as she's riding by on her bike. We'll go to the next one. This guy proposals going in, and uh, he just realizes. And the other thing wrong with that picture is there's a dog in there. And so dogs don't belong in proposals. They're animals, people. Come on. Oh, I'm just kidding. All you pet lovers. You remember, if you're going to email me bad things, my email is jeffmize.fbcallen.org. Okay, here's one. Okay, trying to get a good shot. Uh, that little kid, oops, got in the way. I think he tried to get in the way. Here's another one. Okay, you got the dog up there. Next one. Okay, now there's this guy. There's got another proposal at Disney World Magic Kingdom trying to have their magic moment. Now, this thing about this guy, uh, he, he's, he's quite famous for his mistakes, because here's, I got several of him. So there's that one, and then there he was at the Muhammad Ali fight, where he, he got in that picture, and another one. Uh, he's there with the Beatles, he was walking by. Uh, this guy's every, right, for that famous kiss, he, they missed that first picture because he was there. Next one, he, he really, he was all over the place. And then I think we got one more. Yeah, so he, he was there at that one. So anyway, but you, you feel like you've got the perfect shot, and, and then someone gets in the way and just kind of totally distracts from the moment for the picture. And I, and I think that, that, that kind of that idea of the photobomb, it's, it's a pretty good illustration of what we're talking about today. See, see, we have this ideal of who we are as a church and what we feel like God wants us to to be and what we want people to see, what we want to be known for. But sometimes we, us, 
we can get in the way of what people ought to see. God has this picture that he wants to show the world, and sometimes we, we mess that up or, or we distract from that picture, and maybe it's an accident. You know, we, we didn't mean to. Uh, but I believe most of the times we know, we know what we're doing, but we're just not thinking about the reality that we are Christ's ambassadors. We are his representatives uh, here on this earth. We, we're to represent his interests. We're to represent his agenda, uh, the God the Father's agenda, and not our own. And, and I get that, that you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We, we're not perfect. And I know we're going, to, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess things up from time to time. But in order for the world to see what God wants them to see, we have to be, we have to be mindful of our roles as ambassadors, as God's ambassadors. And just to be clear, we are his, his ambassadors everywhere we go, all the time. Whether we're at home, whether we're at work, whether we're at school, whether we're online, whether we're at the ball field, in the gym, at the grocery store, on the roads, in restaurants, whether we're having good days, bad days, whether we're stressed out, whether we're feeling impatient, whether maybe even we're annoyed, we are his ambassadors all the time the time all the time and i love it how people you, you've probably said this i know i probably have too but you or maybe you've heard people say this well I, I can't say that because i'm in the church well it's like like there's some kind of magical boundary that when you live when you leave here all things are go you know you can do whatever you want to do but you can't because you're in the church or you can't lie because you're in church you know no it's it's not that it's it's we are his ambassadors everywhere no matter where we go all the time we are to be his representatives let's read matthew 5 14 15 and 16 we read it earlier with the kids it says you are the light of the world a city situated on a hill can't be can't be hidden no one lights a lamp and puts it under a, a basket but rather on a lampstand and it gives light for all who are in the house in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Now, Jesus calling us, calling his followers the light of the world, that is a huge, huge compliment. That Jesus is calling you, calling me, us, his followers, that's a huge compliment, but it's also a huge responsibility. In the Greek word, the word you, it's, it's, it's a really, it's an emphatic term. So basically, Jesus is saying you, meaning his followers, he's saying you, and you alone are the light of the world. And if you know, your, if you know anything about the Bible, or, or if you've read it or familiar with it, you know that, that Jesus refers to himself. He calls himself the light of the world. And so when Jesus says that you and I are the light of the world, he's not implying that we are the source of that light. Okay? He's not saying that the light radiates from us. He alone is the source, but we are the reflection of his light. Think, think sun and moon. We see the moon at night, not because the moon is a source of light, but we see the moon at night because it's reflecting the light from the sun. And so he says, you, emphatically, you are the light of the world. And that phrase, are, it's in the present tense, meaning that's, that's what we're supposed to continually do. We're supposed to continually be the light of the world. It's not a one-time shot, or it's not just when you're here at church, or, or when you're in Bible study, or when you're with other believers. It's you are the light of the world. It's, it's kind of this state of being. It's, it's, it's who we are. It's what we do. We're his ambassadors all the time, everywhere. And what does, what does the light do? Well, it helps you to see. Light helps you to see. When it's dark, you can't see anything. Uh, I don't know. We, we, I forgot where we were, but we went and kind of wandered in some caves, went on this tour, and, and you get to this one, one point, and I, I, I'm very claustrophobic, so this was kind of a, this was a, a maddening time for me, but I got, the more and more we got in, I got used to it, uh, but for a while there, I thought I was going to uh, scream and, and run like a little girl, but anyway, we're going further and further in there, and they get to this one point where he says, okay, you just need to stand still, and he goes, and don't move, don't go anywhere, he goes, because I'm fixing to shut off this light, and I don't know if you've ever been in like just pure darkness like that, but he shut the light off. And you can't see anything. And I remember doing this, right? And I couldn't see my hand because it was so dark. Okay, so what light does, here we go. I know, that, I know this is going to be shocking to you, but what light does is it helps you to see things. When it's dark, you can't see anything, but light makes it so you're able to see. That's just the nature of light. Light is supposed to shine. It's, it's supposed to illuminate. 
And so we are the light of the world. And what do we want to illuminate? What do we want people to see? What do we, what do we need to make sure that we don't get in the way of people seeing? Remember, we're not the light. Okay? I mean, remember, we are light. We're not darkness. And we don't want to hide something. We don't want to... We don't want to make things, uh, uh, get, get, d- distract people from things. We want to make things visible. So when people look at us, what do, what do we hope that they see? What do we hope that, that we're known for? Well, here's, here's the big shocker for you. It's the first a blank in your outline. We want them to see Jesus. We want them to see Jesus. You know, no surprise there, huh? You probably could have filled that one in. You probably had it filled in. We don't want them to see us. I know that they're going to see us, but what I, what I mean is we want them to see us making much of God. We want them to see Jesus. We don't want to get in the way. We don't, we don't want to photobomb God. We don't want to do that. We don't want to distract. We don't want to be anywhere in the frame. We want, we want the city of Allen in our community. We want them to see Jesus. And why does this area need the light of Christ? Because we're living in a dark place. We're living in a dark place. And and here's what I mean by that. There's hopelessness in our city. There's there's a lot of fear in our city. There's a lot of emptiness in our city. There's a lot of families that that are struggling. There's a lot of marriages in our city that that are falling apart. There's there's a lot of people in our city who are putting all their chips, all uh, of their identity. They're just shoving it all into their work or into their wealth. Uh, There's a lot of loneliness in our city, a lot of addiction a lot of selfishness, a lot of pressure to achieve, and, and on and on. And there's so many other things that you could probably list. And our world needs to know that Jesus is the source of hope. Jesus helps us to overcome those fears. Jesus, Jesus is in the business of putting families and marriages back together. Uh, Jesus gives us our true identity. Jesus is the source of true joy and peace. He, he restores. He he makes things new, and when people look at, us, look at us, we want them to see Jesus because Jesus is what this world needs. This world doesn't need us. It doesn't need you, and it doesn't need me, but it needs the light of Christ shining through us to help point people to Him. But here's the danger. Here's the danger. It's possible to hide your light. I know the song we just sang said, hide it under a bushel, and we all yelled what? No, no, I'm going to let it shine. But the truth is, is there are followers of Christ who are hiding. And you've probably heard someone say this, or, or, or maybe it was said, maybe you've said it, or, or maybe, maybe it was said about you, but I've known that person forever, and I never knew they were a Christian. I never knew they were a Christian. Now, how, how, how can that be? How can you know someone forever uh, or for a long, long time, and not know they're Christian. Well, I'll tell you why. Is the light, their light isn't shining. You hide it. But that's the opposite of what light is supposed to do. Jesus even talks about how absurd that is. He says that no one lights a lamp and then hides it. He says a, a city on a hill, if it's up on the hill, you can't, it can't be hidden. And you don't, and, and you don't light a lamp and then just cover it so no one can see it. He goes, that's, that's crazy. That's, that's ridiculous. The whole point of lighting the lamp is so that people can see. And some of us are, are failing at being lights. And the sad part is, and, and here's, here's, here's the thing, the sad part is that it's quite possible that you're going to be the only light that people in this community are exposed to. So if you're the only light, but you've covered your light, then they've missed their opportunity to see Jesus. So it's imperative that we shine, not so that they can see us, but so they may see our good works and give glory to who? To the Father in heaven. So when this community sees us, we want them to see Jesus. So so how do we do that? What does that look like? Well, we're going to run through these really quick. The first one is this, is if we want them to see Jesus, then we're going to be a church that where the gospel is proclaimed and lived out. The gospel is proclaimed and live out. Mark 16, 15 says, And then he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. To everyone. Now, it's no big secret that if we want people to see Jesus, then we've got to talk about him. People need to hear our story. People need to hear how Jesus changed our lives. People need to hear that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to to God except 
through him. And the only way that people hear that is if we tell them. You see, we have to use our, our words. We are all called to tell people about the good news of the salvation that's provided through Jesus Christ. And that good news, it's the offer of forgiveness of sins and the offer of of eternal life. You see, someone, someone told you, Ross said that earlier, we're thankful for the people that told us about Jesus, and, and we need to be busy about telling other people about Jesus. Now, I, I've said this before from up here, but I'm always amazed at what gets shared on social media, okay? I'm always amazed, and thank goodness for social media, because we miss so much before it was even in existence. We, mi we miss so much I mean, we never knew what we were all eating before social media. We never knew that. We never knew that your child got hurt and that before you would give care to your child that you would take a picture of it and post it about their injury and then give your child aid. We never knew that. We never knew that. How did, how did we know before social media? We never knew every thought that came into your mind before social media. I mean, how did we know? We, did, we never got to see literally hundreds of pictures of you before social media with, with your hand on your side and your leg kind of twisted and, and, you know, and all those kind. We never knew that. But now we know because of social media. We never knew your political views. We didn't know that. And we're so thankful we know that now. Thanks to social media. And we, oh, here's one thing I didn't know. We didn't know that we needed to copy and paste things to let you know that we loved you or that we loved God. And then if we didn't do that, then somehow we didn't love God and we would break this chain and the blessing and the angel of, of happiness wouldn't come visit us. We didn't know that before social media. Oh my goodness. That's so awesome. And, and but, but thankfully, thankfully we know all that now. And how do we know that? Because, because we all post it. We all post it. We share it every day, all the time. We share and we, we reshare things that we like, we enjoy, things that are funny, things that, 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 that we agree with, causes that we're for, um, uh, causes that, that we want people to know about. We share things about updates about our life. We share controversial things. We share things, sometimes we share things that aren't even true. Um, we'll share things that we might be true, but we're kind of lazy to try to fact check them. We'll share all kinds of things, and we're not afraid we're not afraid. But for some reason, we get a little hesitant to share the gospel. And, I, and I, I'm not talking about sharing it on social media. I mean, you can. I mean, share scriptures. That's one of, the, one of my favorite things that I see people sharing is, is God's word. Um, and that's, that's okay. But, but what if we shared Christ as much as we shared our selfies? What if, what if we shared Christ as much as we... We shared the, uh, uh, the, the pictures of, of our favorite foods. Or, or what if we, sh here's a good one. What if we shared Christ as much as we shared our opinions? And my goal is not to hammer social media. I've got it. And you, you, a lot of you are, are, are my friends on there. And, and, and I like all your stuff. And, and, and you like my stuff mostly. And we have a good time. But, but I just, I just want to call to attention, to my attention and, and to our attention, just the discrepancy beto between what we're willing to share and what we aren't. And why is that? Fear, maybe? Rejection? Don't know what to say? Don't know how to say it? Afraid of questions? Afraid of what will cost you? I get all those things. Th those, those are real things. Those are real things that I struggle with, too. When, when I want to, to share the gospel, or I feel God's nudging to say, hey, hey, talk to this person. Start a, start a gospel conversation. But, but, it, those things are real and, and guess what as a church we we have things that can help you with that and we and we want to help you with those things um, but if, if we want people to see Jesus and they have to hear about him from us and and okay not just hear it but then they have to see it lived out in us so here's the other side of that you can't share the gospel and then be a jerk to everyone okay you, you can't share the gospel and then just ignore people you can't, you can't share the gospel and then, and then just be judge and jury over everyone. You can't share the gospel and then act superior to everyone else or like, I'm more spiritual than you are. We have to share the gospel and then live like people who've experienced the life transformation that the gospel provides. That means that we live humbly. We live sacrificially. We live boldly and, and, we're, and we point others to him. And, 
we want to be a place that's known for for sharing and for living out the gospel the next thing i think that that helps people to see jesus or 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 how people are going to know jesus in this place is is love in action love that's in action uh john 13 35 says by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you love if you have love for one another jesus jesus told his followers you want them to know you belong to me you want them to know belong then the way they will see it is how you treat one another the distinguishing mark of people that follow jesus was their love so it's fair to say that if people see believers hating on each other if they see believers fighting one another if they see believers being jealous about one another um, and if they see believers being snobs towards one another and towards the rest of the world then that's that's going to send a pretty confusing message to the rest of the world and jesus knew that in order for 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 us to be effective out there then we've got to be okay with each other in here we can't be effective lights to the world if there's a lot of darkness in here we can't be effective lights out there if there's a lot of darkness in here and and i get that when people a lot of people come together especially when we get in community together in, in smaller groups i get that there's going to be some bumps in the road i mean it's just natural where people are there's going to be some struggles i mean you see it in families right as families we we get into some struggles we see it in 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 businesses businesses you know there there can be a little bit of some infighting some things going on happens in sport teams you know sometimes things just get a a little bit ugly in in your own house and Jesus' disciples had some issues too remember that they were arguing with one another and at one another when they were trying to figure out who among them was going to be the greatest but Jesus knew that in order for the objective the, the purpose that he came for to be fulfilled his followers had to be united we can't live for our own agendas. We, we aren't working, f- if we're, we've got to be working under one goal, one purpose, one agenda, and, that we're, and if we have these dueling agendas, then it's, it's going to hinder all of us from being effective. Here's the thing, churches can fall apart and render themselves useless when the members lose sight of the fact that we're all on the same team. We've got to be willing to love each other and to show the world what that looks like. That's, that's what's going to distinguish us from everyone else. It's not going to be our buildings. It's not going to be our music. It's not going to be our programs. But it's going to be our love for God and our love for one another. Which, by the way, if we love each other the way that God calls us to love each other, that kind of stuff gets noticed. And that kind of stuff is attractive. People will want it. So that we, want them to, we want them to know Jesus through our love. The next thing is we, we want to be a church where diversity is celebrated. Diversity is celebrated. Revelation 7, 9 and 10. And this, is, this is a vision that John sees, and he's talking about what, what heaven's going to be like. He says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our god who sits on the throne and to the lamb now i'm not sure if you know this and i hope this doesn't burst some of your bubble but um heaven's not going to be all white okay it's not going to be all white people it's not going to be all brown people it's not going to be all all black people it's not it's it's not going to be that it, it's it's not going to be just one people group. It's going to be believers from every, you notice the language? Every nation, from all tribes, from all peoples, from all languages. And here's what we believe at FBC Allen. If heaven is going to be that way, then FBI, FBC Allen should be that way too. If heaven's going to be that way, then this place should be that way too. What we want to be uh, an all nations congregation. That's what we want to be. And we can't celebrate diversity if we're scared to invite that diversity in. But, but they, they, they look different. They talk different. They don't dress the way we dress. They, they don't even, some of their ideas are different than our ideas. And guess what? They didn't vote the way I voted. Or you know what? They, they well, you know what? People could say the same thing about you and me. They could look at me and say, he, <laughs> he's goofy. 
he he looks different he talks different he doesn't dress like me he doesn't act like me he didn't vote like me he's got some different ideas than me and you know what that's okay matter of fact that's good we don't need to be all the same people we don't need to all look alike or talk alike or think alike or dress alike or vote alike our unity is not found in sameness okay listen to this our unity isn't found in sameness our unity is is that we're all sinners we're all sinners our unity is is that we all need a savior our unity is that we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Our unity is that we believe the Bible that has God for its author, salvation for its end, and truth without any mixture of error for its matter. Our unity is that God has called us all to repentance. Our unity is found in Christ, not in how we look, in what we wear, in how we talk, in where we were born, or how we voted. Don't fall for that garbage, okay? And let me say it again. That's garbage. You see, Jesus died on the cross for all mankind so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. When people see us, I want them to see diversity. I don't want people to think they have to fit into a certain mold. If you say you have to be like us, then we're not shining the light of Christ. What we're doing is we're just adding to the dark. got really quiet you know what i love about the younger generation my kids generation is diversity is just a normal part of their lives it is they see the differences but the differences really don't matter and you know you know what people are attracted to people are attracted to other people who treat them like people people are attracted to other people who treat them like and i'm not saying we don't we, we don't celebrate our heritages and celebrate our different cultures but the bottom line is people wanted to be treated like people and guess what that's what jesus did he treated people like people. He was drawn to the wealthy. He was drawn to the poor. He was drawn to the outcast. He was drawn to the in crowd. He was drawn to the people who agreed with him. He was drawn to the people who didn't agree with him. Um, he was drawn to the religious. He was drawn to the sinners. He was drawn to the healthy. He was drawn to the sick, the people that looked like him, the people who didn't look like him. Jesus treated everyone like people. He gave everyone value. And he gave everyone status. Now listen to this. He didn't compromise the truth of his message or deviate uh, from the purpose his father gave him. But even when they didn't agree with him, they were still drawn to him because they knew there was something unique about him. You see, God calls us to shine his light to everyone. We don't pick and choose. We just shine. And how cool would it be if this place, if FBT Allen was known as the All Nations Congregation here in Allen? Because it's going to be that way in heaven. And how did Jesus tell us to pray? He said that your will be done on earth as what? As it is in heaven. Wouldn't it be cool if that's what we were known for? And the next thing there is that needs are being met. Needs are being met. James 2, 15 and 16 says this. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. And if one, of you, if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what, what good is it? You see, these verses are speaking about believers helping other believers. But the idea carries out into outside of just believers in our community, but, but it, out to our city. We can't, here's the deal, we can't claim God is love and then ignore a hurting or our needing community. We can't do that. Love will be demonstrated in actions. That, that last phrase there in verse 16 sums it up perfectly. It says, what good is it? Charles uh, Spurgeon, a, a famous uh, preacher evangelist, he was credited with saying it this way. He says, if you want to give a hungry man a tract, which basically a tract to, to share the gospel, if you could say, if you want to give a hungry man a tract, wrap it up in a sandwich. Wrap it up in a sandwich. The idea is that we have to be, as a church, we have to be about both. So if, if we just give the hungry person a sandwich but know Jesus, then their stomach may be full, but their eternity hasn't changed. But to share the gospel to someone who is hungry but then not feed them, th then to ignore their practical need, then that's to ignore the very love of Christ that we're trying to share with them. Jesus met needs all throughout his ministry. He healed sick people. He gave sight to blind people. He comforted uh, the grieving. And the truth is, when we fail to try to meet 
a person's non-spiritual needs, we may, in fact, build a barrier to meeting their spiritual needs. I mean, why do we have a food pantry here at our church? Because guess what? People in Allen and in Lucas, they have people who are hungry, who don't have food. Why do we offer marriage and, and, and parenting seminars here at our church? Because there are marriages in our community that need strengthening, and there are parents in our community who need support. Why do we partner with schools in this area? Because these schools need help meeting the needs of their children and their families. Why do we, why do we take a, 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 a choir, a cornerstone, our cornerstone ministry, and go to senior living places every month, twice a month? Because there are, there are lonely older people who are needing friends, who are needing support, who are needing hope. Why do we have a special needs ministry? Because families need help as they deal with the overwhelming task of caring for their family members who have those special needs. And we do it all because, number one, Jesus told us to, and number two, because we want to take those opportunities to point people to a God who loves them and wants them to spend an eternity in relationship with Him. Anybody can meet needs. We're not special by meeting needs, but what makes us different is we want to meet those needs and wrap that up around the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to be known for meeting the needs of people, and when we do, we want to make sure that they know that God will satisfy their ultimate need, their need for a Savior. And the last one is we want to be known for a, a church where hope that leads to rejoicing. Hope that leads to rejoicing. Romans 15, 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Now, you know, you know what we have a lot of in this world? We have a lot of negativity. You know what we don't need in this world? A lot of negativity. And you know what we don't need in this church? We don't need a lot of negativity. Church should be a place of hope. Church should be a place of joy. Church should be a place of comfort. Church should be a place of, of forgiveness. Church should be a place of love. Church should be a place of excitement. Why? Because guess what? Jesus is here. Jesus is here. And because Jesus is in our hearts. So not only is he here, but he's, but he's everywhere. Now, I'm not asking us to act like we don't have struggles. Um, we, we acknowledge that here at this church. We know that life has struggles. But we need to also make sure that we acknowledge the joy, the hope, the love, the forgiveness, the peace, the identity, the comfort, the strength that we have in Christ. We need to, we need to be a people that acknowledges that. There is a time to weep. There is a time to weep. The Bible says that, that there is a time to weep. The Bible also says that there is a time to mourn. But the Bible also says, and just like Ren McCormick told us in Footloose, there is a time to dance. Now, don't worry, I'm not about to bust a move up here, okay? Wish I could, because if I could, I would. But there is a time to dance, and, and, and there is a time to laugh. There is a time to celebrate. And wouldn't it be great if we were known for our joy? Wouldn't it be great if we were known for our hope? If we were known for our peace? If we were known for, for those things? And, and not because our circumstances are always perfect, because we could all stand up here and testify let me tell you how my world is rocked right now. But we have that hope, that we have that joy, but because we, have, we, we are in Christ, and because of Christ, we have those things in spite of our circumstances. We are more than conquerors. We are victorious. We need to rejoice. We need to celebrate in that hope that is found in Christ Jesus, and we're going to do that real quick right now. You, you are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that we may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Here's what I say. Let's shine bright. Let's be a place that's known for the gospel. Let's be a place that's known for its love, for its diversity, for its compassion towards others, and for its hope and joy. Let's be known as the place that makes much of Jesus, and let's make sure that we don't get in the way of all of that from being true. May God use us to bring Him glory and to take Him to a hurting world.